Let's go. Let's go. For the first time ever, California's Maple Street Correctional Center opened its doors to a television crew. Stop screaming at me. I'm in jail. Giving incredible access to a uniquely female space. Oh my God, it's so beautiful. That is home to some of America's most dangerous women. I was smashing her face up against the bars. Charged with everything from drug trafficking to armed robbery, gang violence, <laughs> and even murder. I had stabbed him 50 times. Our cameras captured every shocking and sometimes surprising moment <laughs> of life behind bars. But jail life can be explosive. <laughs> And every day can be a battle to stay safe. When good girls go bad... It's like the fucking soap opera. ..anything can happen. <laughs> On the outskirts of San Francisco, Maple Street Correctional Centre houses up to 270 women... ..with new inmates arriving every day. Ladies, you're on a split housing unit, so it's intake and GP. So listen for announcements for intake, that's you. You're gonna get two hours of wreck a day and you're gonna be locked down the other 22 hours. There's a button in your cell that's for emergencies only. You're gonna go to your cells, make your beds. Okay, you guys stand by, let me figure out where I'm gonna put you. The women's pods are named after the local landscape, ocean, valley, and bay. There's also a medium security transitional housing unit downstairs on the second floor. But the intake area for new arrivals is back upstairs in Bay. Two, three, four, five. It's called jail, jail pong. pong. Instead of beer pong, we'll play jail, jail pong. pong. They're made of uh, tissue balls. And I wet them with some wine. And so we'll show you how it's played. <laughs> A little bit more practice. Yeah, well, your skills, girl. You're better the other day. <laughs> I suck today. This is the best. And you can't do much else. And you're crying to yourself. Still fresh from the streets, the women on intake can be drunk, high, or have mental health issues, making this pod one of the most dangerous and unpredictable in the whole jail. It's just a constant flow on Three Bay because it's an intake. People are ringing their buttons constantly because they're still learning the jail rules, so sometimes people use it as a doorbell. Hello? Hi, can we get a plunger, please? Our toilet's never closed. Did you put anything down there? It's flushing, it's just cloth. Okay, is it filled with poop or is it filled with paper? Paper and, yeah, both. Every day is a new day, so with hope um, and hard work, I hope it's gonna be a good day, but you never know what to expect. With just one officer supervising up to 64 prisoners, staff in Bay need to be constantly vigilant. Their life and the lives of the inmates could be on the line. And suddenly, Officer Batanzo has an inmate in crisis. We're just waiting for medical. Record for I first became aware that there was an issue when I opened the door and I saw her shaking, and that's not normal behavior for anybody. So I got on my radio and I let Master Control know I was having code blue. New arrival Carmen is having a seizure, and jail medical staff scramble to respond. Do you know her history on this program? Nope. She needed help, and then I came right over. She's conscious. The code blue is like someone's having a legitimate emergency medical issue. Now we have room to breathe in. Can you guys call for the charge upstairs? Every time they call it code blue, we take it pretty serious. Uh, we have people that could be responding either to the withdrawal of heroin or withdrawal of methamphetamine, uh, any type of narcotics or drugs. They, their body could go uh, into a, some type of seizure. With 520 inmates, it's fairly common. 24-year-old Carmen is a long-term heroin user 
and also has a history of seizures. OK, we're here to help you, OK? When was the last time you had your seizure? Two weeks ago. OK. And, and as far as medications, are you, are you taking them routine? Of course, we have incidents where they're malingering, they're drug-seeking. So we would also, of course, address that. There's some inmates that are really good at uh, faking stuff. Just the symptoms of her eyes rolled back, back over her head, the way she was posturing uh, showed in the several that I've seen, we could tell that she was having a true seizure. Another concern for staff is that Carmen could have been past drugs while in custody. Did anybody give you anything? No. Nothing? No. That you remember? No. Did you take Nobody gave you anything? No. We're here to help you. We have some people coming to help you more, OK? Okay. With a genuine code blue too serious to be treated in the jail's medical clinic, paramedics have been called to assist. People have to realize the jail healthcare level is like a home health type, and anything that's needing more than that level should have to be addressed in the hospital. She's a 25 year old female, uh, history of uh, seizures, mm -hmm. also um, fentanyl and heroin last use yesterday before coming here. She had the seizures, so she's basically shaking for a few minutes. Any medications? Uh, no medications as of right now. Just as it seems the situation is under control, Carmen has another seizure. When they're really having real seizures, the second seizure really, that, that concerns me more. But luckily, the paramedics are already here. One, two, three. Go, we got the other way. Head first, head first. That's why they decided to give her some medications. If it doesn't stop, then it's going to be detrimental. Um, death might, might occur. The second seizure convinces paramedics she needs an urgent transfer to hospital. When people are detoxing from these really strong drugs, um, they almost, sometimes they almost look dead. They look so bad, you can almost feel their pain. They look that bad. I mean, they look bad. Yesterday was, she was booked yesterday, and last known use was yesterday. No known allergies, no known medications, last known drug use was yesterday. Fentanyl. Do we know what is fentanyl? Yeah. I would say probably 85, if not more, percent of the people that are in here, uh, whatever charge they are, it's usually their charges are related to drugs somehow. Wow. Sending an inmate to the hospital is a bit of a security risk. Let's see here. All inmates, usually regardless of the circumstances, we will make sure that they are restrained either to the gurney if we have to, or the situation will put belly chains on them. Uh, depends on what their medical ailment is at the time. We always have an armed deputy that will respond uh, with the ambulance to the hospital. Drug abuse can lead to serious health problems with like withdrawals, heart problems, disease problems, skin problems. Um, I mean, there's all kinds of issues that people have, potentially losing your life too. Although Carmen is now in the care of medical professionals, today's shift is far from over for Officer Batanzo. Back in Bay Pod, it's been just a few hours since Officer Batanzo assisted an inmate having a seizure. Like I say, when it rains, it pours. So. There's going to be just phases where we go through where we just have a lot of higher maintenance inmates. And it's not long before another new inmate is in need of attention. Are you ha do you have anxiety? Look at me. Do you have any history of heart stuff or what? You do? You do. OK, so it j your chest hurts? And you have blood in your stool? OK. Hi, it's Batonzo. Um, can you come up here, please? I have another lady um, that is complaining of chest pain. OK, so I just talked to the nurse, and he's going to come up and check on you, OK? How is your chest pain now? It's going into my neck. It's going into your neck? OK. I can't breathe. Well, he's coming up right now, OK? Don't bang on my door, please. Okay, don't bang on my door, please. 
I'm dealing with someone else right now that doesn't feel good. Can I get a rover to three bay, please? With two other inmates in need of assistance and things getting out of hand on the pod, Officer Batanzo calls for backup. Yeah, I have a couple people that are having some medical issues at the same time. I have uh, the nurse en route for one in six. I didn't know what was going on, and that very rarely happens. Three things, like literally almost at the same time. Um, almost makes you scratch your head, but it happens, I guess. All right, I don't think it's a code blue. She's complaining of chest pain, but she's been complaining of pain all day. She's in number six. And then I have 10 banging on her door, and then another one up there that's having a panic attack. Right. You want me to help you? And then there's another one up there that's starting I just, I need chipping you to away. Slow down, I need you to breathe, and I just need you to sit down for me. Perfect. Perfect. Here's the nurse, he's gonna help you, okay? Yeah. So you need to be nice to him. Don't be mean, all right? I handled the medical emergency first, and two other people assisted with the other two ladies. Well, I think I'm having a panic attack because I feel like like I can't even get like a slow, steady breath. Um, I feel like the walls are closing in on me and I feel like I can't breathe and I'm like suffocating in here and I'm like withdrawing from opiates and like all this stuff is going on. I just, and I just like. She was very quiet. She slept most of the time. And then I hear pounding on the door. So I was kind of surprised because I hadn't heard a peep out of her. I feel like hot as hell. But then like if I get under the blankets, like I'm sweating and then I'm like cold and then like I kick my blankets off and it's just like the fucking worst feeling ever. I thought I was strong enough to like put, go through this withdrawal stuff like naturally. And, but I can't. Meanwhile, downstairs, Danette is also suffering from withdrawal symptoms. Okay. Slow down. I haven't had my segment in five days. I want me to help you. Yeah. Okay, I need you to do me a favor. I need you to slow down for me first. Breathe so I can talk to you, because I can't understand you when you're crying, all right? So I want you to slow down for me. All right, get your breath. All right. Got it? Perfect. So when was the last time you had your medication? since um, Thursday night when I got arrested. All right, so here's what I'm going to have you do for me. I can't get you an answer just yet, but you guys just give me a few minutes. What you're doing right now is perfect. You're calming yourself down. You notice that? But banging on the door is not going to get you anywhere, OK? The inmate experiencing chest pains is transferred to the medical center for an EKG heart examination. There you go. There you go. Perfect. When there's chest pain, abdominal pain, I have to assess her more in the clinic and at least get an EKG, make sure there's not a heart attack. Or that night, both Danette and Natasha receive a visit from the jail's forensic mental health team. However, despite the jail's support, a typical drug detox can last up to a week. One floor down from the other female pods is the transitional housing unit, known as the THU. THU is considered a privilege. It's the lowest level of security in the facility and the nicest accommodations. Inmates here wear pink, and compared to the rest of the jail, it can seem like a holiday camp. Yeah. They have their own backyard, so they can go do yoga, exercise, sunbathe. We have an open day room, so the women could freely watch TV on their break time. Serving time in the THU is a privilege extended to the well-behaved inmates. But any rule breaking sees them rolled up and return to the jail's general population. Oh, it's immensely better. When you are down in THU, the only door that is locked is the one that the deputy comes and goes from. So it's more like, I guess, like a college dorm, I guess you could say. A little bit of coconut hair grease and some sun. It does wonders for, you know, self esteem. <laughs> Sitting in the sun, it's one of the perks of being able to be downstairs and enjoying the nice weather. Upstairs, you don't get no sun. But there's more to life here than just getting a suntan. THU is a segue for the women to get back into society and find their place back in the workforce and hopefully stay out of custody. 
Women in the THU have access to vocational training, which is not available to inmates in the rest of the jail. So we've got French bread. Somebody's going to make a cinnamon cake. Erica is part of the THU's culinary program. She's serving an 11-month sentence for ID theft, shoplifting and possession of crystal meth. I have a drug problem. My life started spiraling out of control. And first it was like I lost where I was living. And then I had to give my daughter to my parents because I didn't have a stable home for her. And the, just the downward domino effect caused me to end up where I am now. But taking part in the THU's training programs has given Erica new hope for life on the outside with her eight-year-old daughter. It's actually going to give me some help to where I can, you know, go home and do something for myself and for my child and not just get high and come back to jail, you know? It's not about me anymore, it's about my baby. Having the opportunity to restart my life while I'm still incarcerated is probably the best opportunity I've ever been given. Everybody's in here, so I don't think... The freer atmosphere of the THU gives inmates here more time to keep up with friends and loved ones. Uh, uh, how was your weekend? and to bond with each other. It doesn't matter what part of the program we're in. Once we're comfortable with one another, we really enjoy doing things together. Over dinner, Erica and friend Shay are discussing their love lives. One night we was having a, a, a girl conversation about girl stuff, you know. Someone that was inquiring. Yeah, someone that was here before had a girl, girl crush on Erica. But, yeah. Nope. Erica's, not, Erica's not gay for the stay, or gay for the pay. Or gay for the pay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it didn't bother me, you know what I mean? Every, inquiring minds need to know. This is my buddy right here. You see, we eat together. This is my this is my buddy. Like, we talk about all kind of things. We both be on the phone, like, right next to each other, like, hi, did you hear what he just said? Like, trying to keep it quiet, talk about naughty things on the phone, you're like, fuck, oh, yeah. She watched me while I have phone sex, I watch her. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am the best phone sex person in the dorm. And I begin to pop it on the phone. I mean, when you be in jail for two years, you got to keep them interested, you know? Well, the worst is when they're like, is that my Oh, so are, is anyone around you right now? You're like, dude, I'm We're in a, a day room. I'm in a whole room full of people, bro. Uh, what do you mean? You can't stick your hand in your pants? No, that's yeah, what I can't yeah, do. Yeah, okay. He's like, this man. I'm like, no. I'm like, oh, my God, stop it. You want to be able to still feel like you have that connection with somebody at home. My baby, that be like, call me right back. I'm finna come. Call me back. <laughs> call me right back. I'm holding on to that last thought. Hurry yeah, up. Hurry up. Call you back. I'm like, For them to even take the 15 minutes or a half an hour or 45 minutes or however long you want to be on the phone for doing whatever you're doing, it <laughs> makes you feel good because a lot of the times people just forget where we are and it, it sucks. All my phone takes me successful. <laughs> We cleared out the whole section. You made everybody nervous. <laughs> in THU, once you get comfortable and you get in your routine, you don't really realize how easy it is for you to do something stupid and fuck it up. Our conversations be lit. <laughs> phone sick. Um, all the time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I can't take Erica nowhere. After settling into the privileges of the THU, Erica has unexpectedly returned to the main jail. Yesterday after we left the kitchen, I was asked to roll up my belongings to come back upstairs. Um, I uh, did something that was apparently not okay by THU standards. Um, I had a friend of mine post something on Facebook telling him where I was and asking, you know what I mean, for people to send me love or, you know, send me pictures or whatever. Most of the girls that get rolled up are for serious offenses like bullying, doing something illegal, like maybe drugs or something, or violating um, a social media policy because uh, we have a strict policy about not Facebooking while in custody. Erica's friends on social media with several of the jail's counselors who reported her online activity straight away. It was heartbreaking. It was, you know, I, mean, I was so upset. Like, I was in tears before I even was done. As soon as I started taking my pictures down, I was crying. I would chop off both my arms and both my legs to be able to go back downstairs because I knew 
that I was gonna leave here in a different place than when I got here. And that's what matters. Erica's hopes of resolving the situation and returning to the THU rest on Officer Vieira. Hi. Well, all I want to do is talk to you personally about what happened, because I wasn't here. I'm so mad at myself because like, Good. I, I didn't... You should be mad at yourself. I'm very upset with myself. Good. When it came to her roll-up, yes, I was very disappointed in her. I'm just trying to understand, OK, how you don't understand that Facebooking, while you're in jail, is not OK. It's use of social media. And I cannot oh, forgive you for that. I'm it's so it's sorry. huge. I know you're sorry, but I can't have that. That is a general rule violation. That is a safety breach. Yeah. And right now, my opinion is not to bring you back at all. Somebody posted on Facebook, you know, oh, I'm in jail, come see me. And if somebody is in a gang or wasn't a gang, or if there's any kind of um, a threats towards somebody, um, you know, it would make it very easy for them to find that person. I get it, I understand what's going on, but right now how things sit, my personal opinion is I don't want you back. I don't want you to jeopardize anybody else's uh, safety. I understand. Uh, All right, thank you. Okay, hang in there. Bye. Tough love is part of the job, and um, if I didn't uh, care about these women, I wouldn't be here after 18 plus years. Back in her cell, and with her hopes dashed of a return to the THU, Erica gets a visit from Officer Batanzo. Just stand by for a second. Oh, I know it's a little overwhelming. I know that this must be hard, OK? Let's take a deep breath. Is there any way I can call my mom? Yeah, let's get you calm down first, because you're just going to upset your mom. I can tell you that you're not the first person that this has happened to. Okay? And you won't be the last. The, the rules are very strict over there. You got lots of time to, to earn your right to go back there, right? So that's what I would start focusing on. You can sit here and beat yourself up, or we can move on. Okay? So I'll give you some time to make some calls. Fair enough? I'll be back in three minutes, okay? Once you mess up, they want you to really feel that. And the drop of a hat, it's like everything changes. Less than 24 hours after suffering multiple seizures, Carmen has been given the all clear to return from hospital. Keep the volume down. Oh, I just got back from the clinic and they're just giving me lunch. 50-year-old Danette is also picking herself up after last night's severe withdrawal symptoms. I'm doing better. I decided to come out of my room, out of my shell. Still really antsy. Um, could really use my medication. I'm hoping that something falls through for me today. Yeah, I just ate some graham crackers. Yeah, I, my appetite's OK. I just don't have the, my teeth. <laughs> so. It's a little difficult for chewing. <laughs> um, it's a good thing it's just sandwiches today. Still detoxing from heroin upstairs, Natasha is also attempting to have lunch. But new neighbor Erica soon notices that all is not well. She peed. And it's coming out the door. Apparently, somebody's getting sick or urinating on the floor. I don't know. Always a good time at intake, let me tell you. Never a dull moment. All right. So is that uh, bile? OK. The smell um, when they're first detoxing from heroin is really, really bad. It's just something in the in the vomit or the bile that comes up. It it just reeks. It's like all these toxins coming out. It's awful. Inmates usually clean their own cells, but when they're not in a fit state, it's often inmate workers who are called on to do the dirty work. A lot of people they come in here. They they said they'd be doing crystal meth, heroin, coke, crack, 
uh, just a whole lot of stuff that just sounds like it hurt. It shows on their face. They're in here looking fragile. When they throw up, their body is croaking. Because when you see them, they're like walking zombies. Have you kicked before? You haven't? OK, so this is just the start of it, OK? The girls are going to help you out today. But in the future, I'll have, I'm going to have you clean it up yourself. But because you're not feeling well, we're going to help you out, OK? If one of my friends was in there doing that, I'd be like, bitch, get up off the floor and fucking clean your shit up, because this is crazy. I, I know that you're not feeling well. Okay. Yeah, well, I had I had the garbage can like over there in the corner, and then so like, I want you to take off all the sheets and everything. So we're gonna give you a whole new bedroll. Okay. And then when you come out for your shower, I want you to take that bag and throw it away, and I'm gonna give you a new bag. Okay. And the girls are gonna help clean this up this one time. That's fine. Get this stuff. There's a yellow bin downstairs. I want you to throw it all away in the yellow bin. My butt crack feels like it has like a rash. We'll talk about it. I can't help with that. Yes, I know it's a medical. I, like, was so, like, embarrassed. Like, I was ashamed. I, like, was, like, I felt so bad. And be careful going down the stairs. And make sure you say thank you to the ladies for helping you, OK? <sighs> yeah. Don't step. Don't, you almost stepped in your stuff. OK, come on. Thanks for everyone helping me. OK. Get the, the trash, the trash, the trash. Oh, it smells crazy. It's it's awful. Like, good thing I got a strong stomach, but it's it makes me feel sick. Oh my god, what the fuck? It's so fucking nasty. I take my hat off to any pod worker. Having to deal with the things that they deal with on a day-to-day -day basis is utterly fucking insane. That is something that there should be like a hazmat crew doing. But dealing with bodily fluids is an occupational hazard for everyone involved in jail life. I've had urine thrown at me before. It happened so quickly that I had no idea that it was coming. Once that door opened, I was there and it's, it's you know, yellow stuff all over me. <laughs> I went into the bathroom and I cried. <laughs> I couldn't believe that that happened to me. To me, I felt really dirty after that. Like. I felt like a piece of crap, <laughs> and I just wanted to go home. And um, my sergeant at the time said I had to write a report on it. So, and I didn't have any change of clothes. And uh, I remember driving home that day, I was a half an hour late coming home, and I'm talking to my husband on the phone, and he's like, the kids want KFC. And I'm like, no, I need to come home and take a shower. And he's like, no, but they're hungry. And I'm like, yep, but I need to take a shower. And he's like, but they're hungry. Just stop at KFC. And I'm like, you don't understand. I need to come home and take a shower. I am not. And so like to this day, every time I think of KFC, I think of that, I think of that day. So I can laugh about it now. So yeah. Being housed next door to detox in Natasha, has only increased Erica's desire to get back to the THU. She's hoping someone can pull rank over Officer Vieira, who kicked her out. The sergeant's supposed to come talk to me to see what their opinion is, because, like she said, she, she can be overruled, you know? And not saying that that's what I want to happen, but I just hope that it gets it gets taken care of accordingly. Before jail staff decide what's next for Erica, Sergeant Clayton wants to further investigate her social media posting. So do you understand why I'm in here? I do. OK. So based on what I've read in this uh, short report, um, I want to get your statement on what's happened. I appreciate that you are even willing to listen to my side of it. Um, I was on the phone with a friend of mine a couple of days ago. I was like, hey, can you just do me a favor and can you just post, you know, like say, hey, send me some love. I'm going to be here till March. You know what I mean? Uh, it wasn't my intent to have it be anything malicious. But at the time, my own insecurities and selfishness, I just wanted to hear from people from the outside. 
you know, nobody understands how could it feels when that mail slides under the door. It means that somebody took time out of their day to think about you, you know, and that was, that was all I wanted. Okay. It, I just feel very stupid that I, okay. you know, and it was selfish. It was stupid. Okay. It was stupid and it was selfish. I don't really know, you know, what else to say. It wasn't right. malicious. Like right. I understand. You have a young child. You have a lot of things going for you, right? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of potential that you have for yourself, but there's also, on the flip side of that, there's consequences for whatever your actions are. Of course. We don't know what your actions are, your intent is, and we're not new to this. We know that there's certain verbs that you can use that doesn't mean send me a letter. That doesn't mean send me something different, right? In that part of the facility, there's a wall that's just outside that could somebody could throw drugs over the wall and uh, give it to the inmates. There's consequences to whatever choices you make. Of course. Right? So we're not going to let it just slide through and say, oh, it's okay, it's a pat on the back, no big deal. Okay, we have to react and do what we need to do. I, I don't know if you're going to go back to THU. So I understand that you're frustrated, you're upset dealing with your consequences, but you have to realize that, you know, this is where you're going to be. Time to think for yourself, time to kind of get yourself back on track. I understand. Where you need to be and rebuild. You have a lot of things going for you, right? If we didn't care, we wouldn't bother to take the time. Staff wouldn't bother to come up here. I understand. Right. So yeah. like, just like you've done before, just stay on, you know, stay on the right track and, and go from there. Okay. Okay. All right. It's not the news Erica was hoping to hear, but for now at least she'll be staying in bay with the rest of the jail's general population. Mr. Thompson, you ready to bring her up? In intake, Danette is back on her medication. The inmate with chest pain has been given the all clear, and it's been three days since Carmen returned from hospital after having several seizures. Being in a cell for 23 to 22 and a half hours a day is pretty intense, especially coming from like my lifestyle, which is um, the lifestyle of like a traveling musician. Right now, it's really an, um, an emotional struggle because um, my mom's memorial is today. So that's where I'm supposed to be right now, is in Nevada. And she always said that there was nothing I could do that couldn't be forgiven by her. And um, I hope that, you know, if she can feel me, hear me, that she's feeling that same forgiveness. I think that's all I can do right now. In Baypod, Natasha's still suffering from heroin withdrawal, which is causing tension with her neighbour, Erica. Get it together. You take care of yourself on the street, don't you? And this girl is just always cranky and, like, bitchy and stuff. Like, I don't know what her problem is with me. Like, I've never done anything wrong to her. People expect you to hold their hand while they're in jail. You need to grow up, dude. You're old enough to get in trouble. Like, you're fucking old enough to take care of yourself. Shit. She didn't need to be so rude to me because I'm not on the street like that. I have a home. Like, I live with my mom and my sister and my little kitty cat. I miss so much. Get the fuck out of here. If I was like that in my mom's house, my mom would drag me out of her house by my hair and take me to rehab. My mom would not be like, oh, it's okay, honey, you want some foil? Like, no, you know, God. <laughs> oh, man. Struggling to adapt to her new environment, Natasha is not in a good place. I have been, like, basically like a puppy. Um... Well, I just accidentally licked my ma my mattress that has disinfectant on it because I peed on it when I coughed. Um, <sighs> it is exhausting. So basically, um, I have a drug problem. I am addicted to heroin and crystal meth. <sighs> this detoxing process is a bitch. Makes me not want to go chase the dragon again. Um, which is, you know, terms for heroin. 
With a long list of prior convictions, Natasha was recently re-arrested after failing to attend drug testing, rehab, a work program and a court appearance. And I didn't do any of that. I literally blew everything off. And when police picked her up, she was carrying both crystal meth and heroin. I admitted to the pipe and the dope, but I didn't want them to discover the heroin because I did not want to go through the, like, getting sick thing. I was trying to avoid being dope sick, like, at all costs. In an attempt to avoid withdrawal symptoms, Natasha decided to conceal some of her stash. So as I was in the back of the cop car, like before they both got in, I was already in handcuffs, but I managed to reach around the front of me and like, you know, shove those drugs inside of me. I came in here with a gram of heroin. Um, I had two little half grams. Um, I had them like shoved fairly deep inside of my lady parts. I don't know if we are being like scientific right now. It's a very intricate place, the uterus or whatever. Having smuggled heroin into the jail, Natasha was initially able to continue using. On the first five days, I felt fine. I would just like take a small little dab of it like with my finger and put it in my spork and mix it with water. Um, until it was all dissolved, and then I would just, like, straight snort it, like, out of the spoon, basically. But Natasha was unprepared for what happened when her stash ran out. Every time I would cough or sneeze, like, I would, like, piss myself, basically, and, like, it just, like, hurts after a while, and it's, like, feels like your insides are, like, coming out of you, you know, from your mouth and your butt and, like, everything, and it's, like, Super, just like not, not pretty. I've never felt so helpless in my life as I do right now. Oh, I'm waiting on my clean laundry because I've soiled them all. Like, not like all, when people hear that, they always think like you crapped yourself and like, you know, like they always think of it as like that kind of thing. But like, most of it's just a pee thing and like a puking thing, which is still disgusting, like in a little TMI. But I did talk to mental health earlier, um, and they said that they were gonna bring me more like smutty romance novels. So hopefully I can get some of that, you know, for my imagination and for my own personal pleasures. And uh, yeah, um, I, and I, am, I am asking for a Bible also, what a combination. A Bible and some smutty literature. You gotta love it all. Despite the difficulties of life in jail, Natasha is still benefiting from the support of her family. Hi, Mom. I miss you so much. My time here, like, going, like, once the drugs went out, were out and I was going through the detoxing, that was definitely the worst thing, like, I've ever, like, had to deal with. You did? Oh, my God, Mom. Wow. I heard my sister's voice in the background and like her telling me that she loves me and like she forgives me and that like she's praying for me and stuff. Like I like just like started like crying so hard. <laughs> I love you guys so much and I miss the kitten. That's another one of those things like um you take for granted when you're like so so like caught up in your addiction. Like, you just forget, like, all the people that, like, matter to you, all your family. Bye. With Natasha and the rest of the inmates back in their cells, as a new pod worker, Erica has the day room to herself. I figured I was going to come up here and I was going to be on everybody's shit list and nobody would, none of the deputies were gonna wanna deal with me. And it's just nice to know that I've made, I guess you could say that little name for myself that makes being in general population a little bit easier for me. I'm trying to really keep to myself while I'm up here so that I can stay out of trouble and stay under the radar and do what I need to be able to do to go downstairs. 
I've been in intake enough times to know that this is, this is off the chain. This is crazy. Like to have these, pe the people that are withdrawing so bad. Having struggled with her own addiction to crystal meth since she was a teenager, Erica's decided it's time for her to draw a line. There's always that underlying feeling of, I want to go home and use, you know? And being here this time and seeing how it's affecting my child even more than the time before or the time before that or the time before that, like, it's enough is enough. At the end of the day, when I lay in bed and I look at her picture, you know what I mean? I feel like if that's the only thing I did right in life, I'd be okay with that. I'm very fortunate. I'm very, very blessed even being here, you know? Back to my duty. But for the moment, Erica still has seven months of her sentence left to serve. Six months and 24 days, but who's counting? Um, and has her mind set on one thing for the rest of her time inside. I want to go back to THU so bad and to actually have something that I didn't think was going to change my outlook on life, change my views on what I wanted to do that much, it is definitely something that I want to continue to do. But after a momentous social media mistake, she's returned to a more old-fashioned means of communication. I'm just writing to a friend at home. Snail mail is not my really first choice of mail, but it'll have to, have to serve its purpose. Just a few days later, with his investigation into Erica complete, Sergeant Clayton's meeting with the jail's administrative lieutenant, John hey, Kovach. Yeah, I just want to follow up with the... Uh... Yeah, have a seat. Where he oversees the transitional housing unit, so he wanted to be informed of what was going on. It looked like THU confirmed that the uh, the information went out via social media. He's going to decide uh, who's going to come in or who's going to come out. What would she say about the posting? What was her intention? She said she was just trying to reach out to her friend. She was very emotional about it. I did have some compassion to it and understand and believe what she was saying to me. It doesn't make sense that she would do a third party posting to anyone to bring in some kind of contraband. I kind of think she's telling the truth here is that she was just trying to get some people to maybe initiate contact with her via letters or visits. I think for uh, the conduct she did, uh, though I'm not happy about it, I think we should give her another shot. She has good potential uh, to be able to continue going. People make mistakes, and all she can do is correct those mistakes and see if they can. Uh, realign them on the right path to get them on track. It's good news for Erica. However, there's a major issue preventing her from returning to the THU. As of today, she was just released to another county um, for a 1381 motion that she had filed. Erica's being picked up by another county to face further charges in their courts, but it's likely she'll be returned to finish her sentence at the Maple Street Correctional Centre. OK, so if and when she comes back, mm -hmm. can you let classification know that I'd like to rehouse her back in THU yes. after we give her an admonishment? Mm -hmm. OK. I appreciate all the work you did on this. Um, thanks for bringing it to my attention. Okay. All right? Yes, all right. Take all right. care, Ken. I'll see you. Thank you. Bye. Being down in THU, it has shown me that there's light at the end of the tunnel. I feel like there's actually something that I can do. They show us here that there's so much more to us than what meets the eye. Next time. This is the juicy stuff. So it's fun doing stuff that you're not supposed to do. I think people get a thrill out of that.